Happy Friday to you and welcome back. Been away for a couple of days. Took the family, went and did a little vacation. A couple, three, four days away. Nice change of venue. Just getting to take a break from everything that is happening here on a normal day-to-day -day routine. Loved it. Thoroughly enjoyed the time that we got to spend together uh, for many of the reasons that I've been talking about on the show. Amongst the many highlights, simply getting away, being one of the best, uh, two conversations stood out in my mind. You know, one with my son, one with my daughter, completely different times. Uh, the first of which, though, occurred, we were out, I think it was our last night out. We had dinner at a Buca de Peppo restaurant. If you have not been to a Buca de Peppo, highly recommended. That alone is an experience. But we went, took it a step beyond, sat at the table in the kitchen, kitchen table. Most restaurants have them. It's actually in this particular one, right in the kitchen, table of four. There we were, we looked across, there's the cooks. Got to have some dialogue with the waiters, perfect. At some point during that evening, my daughter, we got to talking about what a difficult job it was to be a cook. You know, we looked across there, it's hot back there, the stove's going. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's any breaks involved. You know, it's kind of nonstop action. The waiters come in, the orders are there. Uh, just really a tough, tough jobs. So we got to talking about, you know, what different people do and how tough of a job this is. And my daughter said, you know, well, why does he do it? And I said, well, I hope it's because he enjoys cooking because it takes a lot of effort. And she kind of looked at me with this bewildered look on her face and she said, well, why would he do it if he didn't like doing it? Interesting point. You know, her whole reality now is people do what they do with respect to work because they love doing it, not because they have to do it, not because they need to do it, which I think is a completely different shift than we saw a generation ago when folks went, you got a job, and I think this is still the reality for a lot of folks today, but you get a job because you need to put food on the table, may not be what you love to do, but there's a responsibility there, you need to feed the family, you need to go out and get a job. So, conversation one, very interesting, just to see what her perspective was on why people do what they do. And then, as I said, completely unrelated, how to be driving past a Major League Baseball Park, and we talked about, you know, what does it take to become a Major League Baseball player? My son. And both my wife and I were on the same page here. You know, I said, you really have to love what you do. You know, and she chimed in and said, and you have to be good at it. You know, in this case, to be a professional baseball player. And so, of course, I agreed. You know, you have to have great ability. But to show up day after day after day, you know, when this is your job, to be one of the best, you have to love what you do. Because you're competing against people who are really in love with what they do. So, I thought very interesting, considering the past conversations we've been having on the show and the importance of really loving what you do. What does it take to become the best, Right? to become a pro, whether you're a professional cook, a professional baseball player. You know, it's that having the ability, number one, but also having the love. Because to really make it, you know, it's gotta take both of those because you're competing against a group of folks who are loving and who are really good at what they do. So I just see this conversation coming up more and more and more. I'm starting to put together some ideas for a new book and really leaning in the direction of targeting kids during the middle school years, no surprise, but starting to look at what does it take to really be successful? What does it take to really thrive years from now? I'm talking about kids 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years of age. And already, what is their mindset about what their goals and dreams are later in life. What does it take to get there? So anyway, throwing some ideas around, but I just thought it was interesting that these two conversations, completely different times from my own kids, made the connection here. So, hope you are having a wonderful week. Glad to be back with you. Today is a Friday. Enjoy your weekend ahead. I will see you next time. Take care.